is up, movie fans, how's it going, it's getting on work, so bear with me, um, so I have posted a few videos and apparently the volume hasn't worked on any of them, <clears throat> uh, only one has worked, and I think that was my Spider-Man uh, movie blog that I did. So now for like the sixth time, I'm going to uh, talk about the same subject. I'm not even going to have my notes. I I should remember it at this point. All right, so let's talk about. Um, uh, oh, let me get this. Let's talk about Tom Hardy. Uh, Tom Hardy is in talks to. Uh, well, there's a couple things about Tom Hardy. He is going to be um, possibly the new Punisher, which I think is awesome. Great. Uh, I think he has got everything that it takes to become is to what the Punisher is. Um, was a huge fan of the Thomas Jane Punisher. Um, really don't understand why they didn't keep going with that. Um, the, the second Punisher that came out with uh, Ray Winstone was good. It was great. It was a little bit more comic-y uh, as whereas Thomas Jane was more kind of like Chris Nolan-esque. Uh, but yeah, the action was amazing. The scenes were cool. So, big fan of both Punisher movies. Punisher is one of my favorite uh, comic book characters hands down I mean he's definitely top three top four but uh if Tom Hardy man he's one of my favorite actors honestly like he can do no wrong in my opinion I would never watch a movie that he would just any movie where a guy's in a car for fucking two hours just talking on a phone to an imaginary dad and to his workers, I probably wouldn't watch it. Like, you know, I did Buried with Ryan Reynolds because I'm a Ryan Reynolds fan. It was what it was, but if it, if it was any other actor, I just probably would not have been able to stand the movie. The, the movie was interesting. It was, it was um, definitely all about dialogue and, 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 and you know, showing emotion through I mean, Hardy killed it, but it was, you know, it's just, it's like a bottle episode, as they say. Um, you know, sometimes you just need more than a guy driving a car. But, that being that may, uh, Tom Hardy's done no wrong in my book. Um, Bronson, Inception, uh, even the movie with Reese Witherspoon and Chris Prine, Pine, you know, horrible director, I think it was McG. But you know, he still did his thing. Um uh Bane, you're incredible. You think darkness is your friend. You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it. You're a pretty big guy for you. But uh yeah, I think you did great. Um amazing. Uh, I truly believe if Heath Ledger hadn't died, that whole plane scene would have actually been Heath Ledger versus Bay, because, you know, he had this whole idea of keeping the Joker in a third movie, so he had to kind of rewrite uh, a lot of what was uh, already written for the third one. They had this whole plan, and uh, so the uh, Dark Knight started off with, like, a heist with masks, um, and then you pull the mask off and you see the Joker. Kind of the same with Bane. It's kind of like a high situation. And he's got the mask on and he takes the mask off. You see Bane. So I really think that part was probably for Heath Ledger. And they just kind of put Bane in it. But Bane killed it, I think. Um, so, like I said, big Tom Hardy fan. I think he was... Uh, I have not seen Mad Max yet. Crazy, I know. I'm going to go see it in theater soon. Uh, but, uh, I heard he's great in it. I heard Charlie's Theron with the shine in it, who I'm a big fan of. Um, she's always been super sexy, 
can rock short hair like no other and uh, and is not afraid to make herself look ugly or whatever you want to call it to you know devote herself to the character so she's she's awesome uh, I'm trying to think of more Tom Hardy movies that I'm a fan of I mean they're all great uh, oh yeah yeah uh, rock and roller rock rock and roller rock and roller uh, with um, um, John of Blank, Madonna's ex-husband, um, Guy Ritchie. He played a gay guy. He was awesome in that. And this guy's got range. He he can really do it. So I think, and he's just got this badass feel. I mean, apparently where he came from in England is borderline bad neighborhood, you know, for England. So, uh, he's a tough guy, I guess. Uh, but he definitely has that presence of don't fuck with me kind of thing. So, I really think he would be a great Punisher. Um, maybe that's the reason he turned down the role for uh, Suicide Squad. As uh, a character I'm not too familiar with. I can't remember his name. But, uh, you know, he's already done one DC character. Maybe doing another DC character would be weird for him. So, for him to do Punisher would be great. I think it would be fucking awesome. Uh, He's not too familiar with it though, because he was like, Brent Castle, yeah, that, that, that's the puncher's name, right? Yeah, so, he doesn't know too much about it, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, <clears throat> he's also about to be in a new movie uh, where he is playing twins, uh, played by him, like, very similar to one of my favorite Jean Claude Van Damme movies, Double Impact. Big Jean Claude Van Damme fan. Uh, one of my favorite movies by him was Double Impact, so the fact that uh, he's uh, going to be doing that is great. And the director, um, like I said, if, if my videos have worked before when I did this review, I could name the guy that's directing this movie, but I'm just winging it right now because it's like the fifth time I've done it, but I do have the audio working now. But uh, the director, we'll go ahead and look up real quick. Uh, I was hoping not to do this. Like I said, everything's a work in progress. So we're we're gonna get there. Uh, Tom Hardy. Let's see. Uh, the structure's not bad. The guy that's doing the uh, twin movie. Um, you know, I'm really surprised. Like really good actors have done work with McG. Like Christian Bell did Terminator Salvation, and like publicly said, he's not. An experienced director who knows what he's doing, and uh, another great English actor ends up doing a movie with him too, which was I don't know, it's weird. Um, so yeah, the Tom Hardy movie is called Legend. Uh, there's a lot of Legend movies out there. I Am Legend, Legends of the Fall. I can't keep up with all these Legend movies, to tell you. Um, but let's go ahead and check this out. Um, identical twin gangsters, Ronald and Reginald Gray, terrorized London during the 1950s and 1960s. It, you know, Tom Hardy has that range where he can definitely play twins. And play both characters and make them completely different. Jean Claude did a good job, but he's no, as far as acting goes, he's no Tom Hardy. Definitely a great action star, though. My favorite by far. Um, Brian Hoagland is the uh, director for the uh, movie Legend that he's coming out of. That's right. So he hasn't done much. He did. Uh, did 42, the Jackie Robinson movie. I'm a big Jackie Robinson fan. Uh, kind of introduced me to Chadwick Boseman. He got to play Jackie Robinson. He's a Carolina boy, um, South Carolina. I'm from North Carolina, so much respect. Um, I think he did a pretty good job uh, in that movie. Uh, 42 was a good movie. I mean, I enjoyed a good baseball movie, and it was good, you know. Nothing great, but it was good. And I think Chadwick did a pretty good job as Jackie Robinson. Um, he also did... 
Excuse me. Payback? I guess the original Payback movie with uh, Ben Affleck, he did a sequel to Payback Straight Up. <laughs> okay. Uh, whatever. Um, the Order and everything. A Knight's Tale. Awesome movie. Um, say what you will about Knight's Tale, but it was a surprise how, how good it was. It was good casting, good actors. Um, Rufus Sewell, I've worked with him on a movie called The Devil's Hand, and extremely nice act, extremely nice guy, he usually plays dickheads, uh, so you would think he would be a dick in real life, but he's actually super nice, and I think he's actually trying to steer away from playing dickheadish roles, but he was the bad guy in Night Cell, and um, it was a surprisingly really great entertaining movie, um, you know, it was, you think, Oh, Night's Tale, you know, blah, 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 a guy from Two Things I Hate About You at that time. But, uh, no, it was, it was a great movie. So, the guy's done 42, he's done Night's Tale, and, um, I think he's actually a good, really good writer, too. He's wrote some movies, uh, he wrote Robin Hood, or he came up with the story for Robin Hood, uh, Green Zone, he wrote that with Matt Damon, which I still never saw, uh, this felt like it was another born movie that I need to see. Circuit of Freak, The Vampire's Assistant. He did the screenplay for that, which kind of got forgotten about. But it's a John Sterling movie, and it's actually a really interesting movie. Uh, not bad at all. Um, he did the screenplay, screenplay for Taking Bellum 1, 2, 3. The uh, reboot uh, with Travolta and Denzel, directed by the late Tony Scott. Not a bad movie. Um, wow, so him and Tony Scott, I guess, apparently have had some, had some, uh, collaborations, because he also did Man on Fire with Denzel Washington and, uh, Dakota Fanning, which is an amazing movie. Um, did the screenplay for Mystic River, which was directed by Clint Eastwood. Uh, so, I mean... Oh, and did the original payback with, uh, wrote the original payback with Ben Affleck, and then I guess directed the straight to DVD sequel, which I don't think was really necessary, but whatever. Uh, he did the screenplay for The Postman with Kevin Costner. I think that's when Kevin Costner's career went, wah, that, I, Waterworld. Uh, conspiracy theory, it's conspiracy theory with Mel Gibson and, uh, Julie Roberts, which I thought was an incredible movie. It really was cool. Uh, he did the screenplay for that. L.A. Confidential, another Clint Eastwood movie. So he's definitely got Clint Eastwood and Tony Scott both have definitely faith in him as far as writing their movies and coming up with that. Um, well, he even did Assassins with Sylvester Stallone and uh, Antonio Banderas, which I'm definitely going to watch again. I mean, I watched it a million. I saw it in theaters as a kid, but. It was such a cool movie, man. I definitely gotta watch that again. Um, Highway to Hell, pretty crazy movie. Friday Thirteenth TV series. So the guy has an amazing writing resume. He's an amazing writer. As far as directing, um, you know, he's he's still kind of new to that. Um, like I said, he, he has done Forty Two uh, with uh, the Jackie Robinson movie, and he uh, did. The sequel to Payback from Ben Affleck movie and The Order, which I never saw. Who's in that? Oh, Heath Ledger. Wow. Oh, yeah, The Priest movie. Yeah, with Mark Addy, who was also a Knight's Tale as well. Um, it's not the one with Matt Damon. I think it's a different one. Anyway, so the guy definitely has writing ability and, and uh, has proven himself as a director in some way, you know, he's not like a shitty director. So uh, I really am looking forward to this Tom Hardy movie, uh, Legend. Um, I, I can go on and on about Tom Hardy. Uh, I am looking forward to The Revenant uh, by uh, uh, Alejandro, uh, the director of Birdman, uh, with 
Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, is Gary Oldman that? Yeah, I think Gary Oldman might be in Child 44, which I definitely need to see. Uh, but um, I think Reverend has Oscar potential, and I'm just saying that because the director is amazing. Um, and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, pretty much every movie he does, he gets nominated. Um, never wins, but he gets nominated. Wolf of Wall Street, Gangs of New York, um, we'll see in Gilbert Grape, uh, Howard Hughes and the Aviator. Like, dude is definitely done his thing. Um, so. I'm definitely thinking that Tom Hardy will probably get supporting character nod or Oscar nod for uh, best supporting actor and I think Leo will definitely get an Oscar and this is just me spitballing knowing the director and the actors uh, that uh, they'll both be nominated and probably the director will be nominated too for best director. Love to see Tom Hardy win um, an Oscar for best supporting role. Would rather it be you know, main role. Um, would also love to see Leonardo DiCaprio win, finally win his awards. They're kind of treating him like Martin Scorsese, where he does all these great movies, and then finally, at an age, you're like, well, we got to give him an Oscar before it's too late, and they give it to a movie that's not quite as sub as good as his previous. Don't get me wrong, Departed was an amazing movie, but like. That was the first time that Martin Scorsese got an Oscar for Best Director. Yet, he didn't get one for Goodfellas, Casino, Taxi Driver, fucking Raging Bull, fucking, um, I mean, Gangs in New York, uh, fucking Color of Money. Uh, there's so many that he should have gotten an Oscar for. It. And finally, he said, fuck it, we'll give him one for The Departed. Which he did deserve, I'm not doubting that, but... So I think finally they will give Leo one, um, probably in a movie where he does well, but not where he, the caliber of movies where he didn't win. Uh, well, else? Uh, there's some other Tom Hardy news that you want to talk about. Um, I'll just go ahead and say that Tom Hardy is my favorite actor out right now the exception of Joseph Gordon-Levitt so those are my two favorite um, up and rising actors Tom Hardy, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, uh, Christian Bell he's a little bit older than them but he's doing his thing um, as far as legendary actors that will always be in my book Daniel Day-Lewis obviously um, Russell Crowe um, you know I hear he can be a dick to work for but Still an amazing actor. Um, I'm actually looking forward to the movie that he's directing. Um, see how that comes up. It looks like a kind of like a slow, epic drama kind of thing, but I'm still going to check it out because he's in it and he's directing it. And I am a big Russell Crowe fan. Uh, so, old schoolers Daniel Day Lewis, Russell Crowe. Tom Cruise. Um, say what you will about Tom Cruise, but the guy has made so many classic movies. You got Risky Business, Color of Money, The Firm, Days of Thunder, Top Gun, uh, Far and Away, which I thought was an amazing movie, um, Magnolia, Vanilla Sky, uh, fucking Mission Impossible 1. And then I like the third one a lot too. Fourth one was good. Second one, yeah, whatever. But uh, I mean, the guy has done his thing, man. Valkyrie, I was a big fan of that. Um, you know, it didn't get much buzz, but it was good. And uh, even the one he did, The Day After Tomorrow, was was so a surprisingly awesome movie. It was like Groundhog Day meets some type of sci-fi movie. I don't know. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of the one he did with, uh, that came right before that, where it was another space movie, it was okay, but it wasn't that great to me. But the guy has made so many fantastic, the interview with the vampire, um, 
Jerry Maguire. Let me just say something about Jerry Maguire. Well, first off, the director, Cameron Crow. Amazing. He's hasn't done anything great here lately. Uh we bought a zoo or whatever the fuck. Uh it was a good movie, but you know. It's not almost famous. It's not Jerry Maguire. It's not singles. Uh but uh Jerry Maguire is one of the most inspiring and uplifting movies that I've ever watched. Like if I get a new job or if I'm about to go do something, I will literally watch Jerry Maguire to inspire me. Um there's such great quotes in that movie. Uh his mentor Dickie Fox is like, I wake up in the morning, I clap my hands, and I say today's going to be a good day, or something like that, and he's like, I love my wife, I love my family, and that's all that matters, just, just some amazing quotes, and of course, the, the cheesy, well, not cheesy ones, but, you know, the cliche ones, like, you had me at hello, and, and, um, what was it, you had me at hello, and then, uh, God damn, you complete me, yeah, so, that movie is just, a great movie. Uh, Cuban Gooding Jr. is probably his best acting performance ever. Um, even his wife, uh, what's her name? She's she's great in it too. Um, really pissed off. I can't remember her name. She's awesome. And his brother, Ari Spears, Matt TV, and Kush with uh, Jerry O'Connell, Bo Bridges, his dad. Um, John Travolta's wife, uh, fucking, uh, Jay, uh, oh, what the fuck is that? Comedian, Jay. the guy that fires him, you know what I'm talking about. I just got off work, so I'm a little out of it. Plus, I've done this fucking review way too many fucking times. <laughs> um, so anyway, Tom Cruise, Russell Crowe, Daniel Day Lewis all-time favorites as far as old school, new school, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Christian Bale, uh, Tom Hardy at the beginning, I mean, first and foremost, uh, Tom Hiddleston's pretty good, uh, Chris Evans, another one, Chris Evans is definitely up there, I mean, I, he's awesome, we'll watch anything he's in, if you've uh, never seen the movie London, by uh with Chris Evans in it. Definitely watch it. It's um got it's Jessica Bill, Chris Evans, and Jason Statham. And uh the movie's called London, which is named after uh the character that Jessica Bill plays London. And uh they break up and um uh, he's not dealing with it too well and she's having a going away party to move to California with her boyfriend. And uh he goes to her party, kind of uninvited, with Jason Statham, who he brings along, who is like his coke dealer. And uh, basically the whole movie is they're doing coke in the bathroom and just talking about life and and getting the guts to go down there and talk to Jessica before she it's, it's a great movie, so you should definitely watch that. Uh, Snowpiercer was great. Wasn't a fan of the ending, but it was a good movie. Uh, so, yeah, Chris Evans, just Squirt Limit, Tom Hardy, um, Cumberbatch, Cumberlock, Cumberbatch, whatever. He's good. He just doesn't do it for me. Um, I don't watch the Sherlock show. Uh, I thought he was great in Star Wars, the, uh, the sequel to the reboot movies of, uh, Star Wars. Um, I haven't seen Imitation Game, but. Uh, he just doesn't do it for me. I'm not saying he's a bad actor. I'm just not. Uh, but I do like Tom Hiddleston. Um, oh, Luke Evans uh, is another another uh, guy that I think is uh, highly underrated. And apparently he's not going to be doing The Crow anymore, which is really disappointing because I was really looking forward to him seeing to do The Crow. The Crow has a has kind of a special place in my heart. It was filmed in uh, Wilmington where... Um, I've done a lot of my work and and uh, moved there for school, and that's where Brandon Lee died. And, um, movies always kind of stuck with me. Saw it theaters, and so 
um, you know, everybody says, you can't remake this movie. Yeah, you can. You can. Um, some don't need it. Some could use it. Some just, you know, another take on it. Uh, so anyway, Luke Evans is definitely another one. So enough of talking about my favorite actors, but I will say Daniel Day-Lewis. Oh, man. This is what I run a small company. It's me and my child. We work for we work as a small company. We're not a big old company. We'll take it. We'll work hard. I'll put my milkshake in your milkshake. I will drink from your milkshake. Normally, I can do a way better Daniel Day Lewis from There Will Be Blood, but I am. It is three in the morning, and I am tired. And I can't do it. And I haven't watched the movie in a while, but it's amazing. Um, Daniel Day Lewis is uh, just, I mean, the only Oscar, the only guy's ever won three Oscars uh, for a main sporting role. So Tom Hanks has uh, got some catching up to do, which I think he very well could have easily gotten for Captain Phillips. That was um, pretty much a. Uh, one of the best performances of his career playing that. Uh, okay, so what else do we have that I was supposed to talk about? I was just going on way longer. Um, Assassin's Creed with uh, Michael Fassbender. They asked him recently, what's the deal? Why has that movie not been, uh, you know, what, what's taking so long? And he basically said, you know, if you want to do something right, you gotta take your time with it, and you gotta, you know, you can't rush it, which is very true. Um, they asked him if he was playing a certain character. I've never played the sh I've never played the game, uh, but he's like, you don't know that, that that's who I'm playing, but I'm pretty sure that is who he's playing. That seems to be the popular consensus. Uh, I'm hoping that Assassin's Creed can break the mold. As far as uh, movie adaptations from video games, because none has really been a critical or success. I mean, you have Mortal Kombat. I think it made money, but you know, it was fun, but you know, it's still not like some groundbreaking movie or whatever. Um, You've got Mario Brothers, which was cool when you're young, but you look back on it now, it's kind of silly. Uh, you've got Double Dragon, which is just not even worth it. Yeah. And then you have uh, uh, Max Payne, which uh, Max Payne, I, I'll never forget the first time I played it, it blew my mind with the slow motion and the shooting. It was really cool. So I was a really big fan of that game. And uh, it was definitely like playing a movie. Like I felt like it was a movie. It was cool. And uh, I do like Mark Wahlberg, which is another person who I should add as one of my favorite actors right now. And you know, a lot of people give him a bad rep, but the guy can act. I mean, The Fighter, Boogie Nights. Um, the man can't act. Uh, he even Departed. He was actually the only actor in the movie. Departed, they got actually nominated for an Oscar. Uh, Martin Scorsese obviously got nominated for Best Director, but Leo didn't get a nomination. Jack didn't get a nomination. Wahlberg did get a nomination. So I, I, I like Mark Wahlberg. I think he's a great businessman and uh, he produces a lot of great shows. But anyway, I was kind of disappointed with Max Payne. I think the visual imagery of it was really nice, the CGI and, and the way they visually did it. But it just failed. Uh, Street Fighter. Uh, Big John claude Van Damme. At the time, I loved it. He was playing my favorite character from the movie. Uh, Guile, who was my, I mean, excuse me, my favorite character from the game. So it was like, you're taking one of my favorite action stars and then one of my favorite games and then making my favorite action star play one of my favorite characters from the game. So it was like heaven. And I really enjoyed it. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's these aren't movies that are Timeless per se. Um, so Assassin's Creed's got a tough uh, job ahead of it. Um, 
Also, Hitman uh, was another movie. Never really played the game, but I dabbled in it and watched it. I think I'm a big Timothy Elephant fan. Justified. Hope you all are some Justified fans. Uh, I think he did a great job as the Hitman. Like, he really went out of his comfort zone um, and shaved head. I think he had to walk down Pat. Like, he just walked just like in the video game. And uh, definitely kept a straight face and no emotion. And there's some really good action scenes. I really actually like that movie. I just think it was a little slower than it should have been, a little bit more fast paced, uh, which they are rebooting. Um, so that wasn't a success either. So if Assassin's Creed can actually pull it off, it could revolutionize um, the whole genre of movies or games being adapted into movies because right now with the comic surge like studios are looking for franchise movies either based off of games or old school trilogies I mean like Terminator, Shilshot, Bengal Matt, uh, the Power Rangers movies about to come out uh, the guy that's directing it it's not good. Um, I was never into Power Rangers. I was a big Ninja Turtles fan. Not that you can't be one or the other. I just thought I never got into Power Rangers. Like It always seemed really corny and cheesy. And even for my age, who doesn't mind corny and cheesy at the time, it just wasn't for me, man. I thought it was weird. And I just thought it was like, I don't know, man. It was something was weird about it. I never got into it. But apparently there's still a demand for it and people want to see the movie. And it is coming out and they're going to try to make it darker. But uh, I, I'm not interested. But that's coming along. Um, speaking of Ninja Turtles, they just added two new people to the cast. Uh, Casey Jones, who I'm a huge fan of. Um, like I said, I am a big Ninja Turtles fan and I do like Casey Jones. They uh, chose the dude from... Uh, the Green Arrow or the Arrow uh, show on CW, which I do not watch, uh, mainly because I was a big fan of the guy who played Green Arrow on Smallville, and I thought he was perfect, so I think they should have done a spinoff with that same actor, but instead CW just got a whole new Green Arrow and did their own thing with it, and I know a lot of people like the show, I just, I don't, I'm not a fan of that actor, he was on the second season of Hong, or third, and, uh, I don't know, man, I just don't like him. Maybe that'll change, but, uh, he's going to be the new Casey Jones. He's going to have short hair, not long hair, whatever. It's kind of like being pissed off that Wonder Woman's tits aren't big enough, which is stupid. Um, they have no value to their superpowers. Uh, and then they also, also, um, the guy from Arrow who's going to be playing uh, Casey Jones is from Canada. So we all know Casey Jones has a hockey stick. And uh, I'm sure being from Canada, he knows how to wield one of those. So, um, and he's got the build for it. And they, they showed a, a picture of it. And he looks pretty badass. Like I said, no long hair, but it's not that important. Long hair does not affect his fighting skills, per se. Uh, and then Tyler Perry. They added Tyler Perry. Uh, never watched any of Medea movies. Um, never really watched any of uh, Tyler Perry's shows. Uh, I will say this. I did watch his... Um, he had, before Medea became like mainstream movies, he was doing plays and theaters as Medea and recording them. And that's kind of how he got famous and I was dating a preacher's daughter at the time, and she made me watch one of these uh, shows that he did, or plays that he did, uh, as Medea. And, you know, it was funny, and it was cool, and you know, whatever, and I appreciate theater. Uh, but I just never got into movies, but uh, I think he's a great businessman. Uh, I think he killed it in Gone Girl. He was stole the show and what little scenes he had. He, he was funny, but serious area uh, the guy's range uh did not like him in the alex cross movies uh maybe not in him per se but in my opinion morgan freeman will always be alex cross if you don't know who alex cross is 
Um, he is a character based off uh, three or four books uh, by James Patterson. Uh, Morgan Freeman has played the character in a movie called Along Him Spider, um, in which he was uh, Alex Cross. Um, nobody else too famous was really in that movie. Uh, great movie though, check it out. And then he played Alex Cross in Kiss the Girls. Um, none of these were like sequels or prequels, it was just him playing that character in different movies. Uh, Kiss the Girls was great. Um, it was set in High Point, North Carolina, because James Patterson is uh, a North Carolinian. And so, in my mind, Alex Cross will always be more Freeman. I really wish they would have made more Alex Cross movies with Morgan Freeman playing it because uh, there's a lot of books out there with Alex Cross and Morgan Freeman definitely could have pulled it off so they went another route and rebooted it with a young Alex Cross played by Tyler Perry and Matthew Fox the bad guy um, Matthew Fox doesn't do it for me I think he might have gotten in trouble for beating up females and it seems like a big asshole and uh it, that that turned me off and then you know um and I'm not gonna say Todd Perry is a reason why I didn't like the movie. I just didn't like the whole consensus of it. Uh but Todd Perry definitely can act and he's not just a comedian. I mean he can be funny but he can also bring that seriousness. So uh, the fact that he's going to be in the initial two maybe um, I'm not mad about. I'm not freaking out about it. Like I'm sure a lot of Twitter faggots are. Um, and when I say faggot, I don't mean in a derogatory way. I just mean it as bitch made. No, sorry. Um, so I will uh, approve of that. I think it's going to be like a politician of some sort. Like maybe like. And cahoots with Shredder. It really would be cool to see him play a bad guy because you don't see that very often. He played kind of a sleazy lawyer in Gone Girl, but um, I feel like he's going to have the same kind of role as um, what's his name, the, the character uh, from the first reboot, the the, the most previous uh, his troll movie, the uh, the guy from Dark Knight. Who's, no, you're still in from. Um, but, uh, I think that Todd Perry will definitely be some type of influence, politician, rich, billionaire, whatever. Uh, so I'm not, uh, so the two editions are, are cool. Um, I'm so excited to wait. I'm a big Ninja Trolls fan. I really enjoyed the last one they did. You know, everybody wanted to hate on it because Michael Bay produced it, but it was a good time and like you can't take that movie too serious it's a movie about fucking talking turtles and rats who know kung fu like I don't want to hear anybody say I didn't like Ninja Turtles it just wasn't realistic enough and it was just too like fuck off like take it for what it is suspend your belief for a little bit like you do with the Die Hard sequel or like the Fast and Furious sequels, just enjoy it. Don't try to depict Ninja Turtles. Like, it was a fun movie. The elevator scene, classic. So, that is about it for this episode. I am running on 38 minutes. Um, I will have other stuff to talk about soon. Um, for now, um, my name is Mark Marshall. Um, this is Eminem's Movie Talk. And, uh, it's going to only get better and better, folks. Um, I won't be as tired for the most part when I film these, and uh, we're going to get like a better ambiance, better camera, uh, a, lot of, a lot of cool stuff, more professional, scripted, organized stuff going on. So, anyway, I'm signing out. Have a good night. Peace be with you, and leave the gum, but take the cannoli. <laughs>